In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a nice pie chart here, as you can see here. And then we're going to give the labels outside, which measures the values, number 18. And then we have a total value of 69, which is basically the sum total of all these values together here. So let's start to explore how to do this. So let's start to explore how we can create a custom data label with total sum outside the pie chart in Chart.js. So the first thing what I want to do here is, of course, go to Chart.js3.com getting started to get the default code. So you can find this link also in the description box. So once you're on the site, scroll down and copy this entire ch chunk of code. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here. And then paste this in here. And then I will just cut this out and paste here the title or just overwrite that. Save that, refresh. All right, so now we have a bar chart. Let's convert this quickly into a pie chart. To do this, I'm going to adjust the width here to 400. And I will scroll down here. I will say here, the type will be pie. And finally, the scales. This here can be removed because a pie chart does not have any scales. All right, so now we have all of this. And this looks absolutely phenomenal. But what I want to do now is start to put in the data labels here outside. To do this, I'm going to use a, a plugin for this. And this plugin is called, you have to pay really good attention on this plugin, is Chart.js Plugin Labels. And here you have to pay attention is because you should see the initials of DV, which is the developer of this, which is called David or Davide Violante. So make sure you get this one. There is an older version that doesn't support Chart.js version 3, but it only supports Chart.js version 2. So you must have this one because this developer, David or Davide, has updated this specific plugin suitable for Chart.js 3. So to get this, all I want to do here, I want to copy this here, this specific uh, link. So it's unpackage Chart.js plugin labels dash DV. You can see that this is the specific item. So what I'm going to do here is just paste this in there, copy all of this string text and because I want to copy and put the source code in here. So once I did this, and this is very important, make sure this specific JavaScript library, the Charges plugin of labels, will be loaded after the Charges library. And secondly, make sure it is the Charges plugin labels. There's another one that's called Charges data label. So don't get confused with those. As I said earlier, make sure this specific initials pay attention pay or pay close attention to the charges plugin name which is charges plugin labels and then initials all right so now we have this i guess that should be more than enough to understand and once you refresh you see it will take some time because we have this unpackaged link here so that it unwraps itself and does something and then once it did it immediately activates itself so now we have this but of course we're not done here why because we need to start working on converting this so what I want to do here now is first of all I go here in the options and say plugins and then in the plugins what I'm going to do here I want to select here basically the labels plugin which is just the object of labels and then in here because you can see here by default it's the percentage and of course the position here should be outside and I don't want percentage because I just want these solid numbers so I want to get an 18 12 all showing here outside so to do this what I want to do here I'll just say your position outside and this is a string value save that refresh all right so now we have this but I don't like this you can see here it's been clipped out that is no good so we have to solve that one as well so let's do that immediately in the options we're going to say here layout and in the layout we're going to say padding and the padding will be let's say here 15 pixels that should be enough Put a comma here, save that, refresh. All right, so now we have this here. And you can see this is still almost slightly overlapping. So let's give this a little bit of what we call a text margin. So it will be away from the so-called pie slice. So in here, comma, and then we're going to say text uh, margin. And this could be equal six. So equal six, save that, refresh. There we are. Did it even work? Or did I save it? No, I did not save it. Sorry. Let's refresh. There we are. So this looks better. All right. So now we have this. But of course, I want to customize this more. And I want to change now the values of this. So to do that, what I need to do here 
is the following. I'm going to say here in the labels, render. And the render is a callback functionality now. Say context, a context. Then say this function arrow expression because it's a callback. And then in here, I'm going to work and give it a certain value. So what I want to do here is the following. I want to first of all show you what is in the context and then we can see how we can convert this into a different value. Instead of percentage, I want solid value. So if I, uh, all right, so let me refresh again. There we are. As you can see, it loads a lot of these things, but that's all right. When I go over one, it will reload. And that's like that. So then at the very bottom here, we just get the one that is Sunday. And the reason why it loads so much is because of the, the effect that uh, ChartJS has because of the animation. So what I want to grab here is, well, we see here the default is percentage, which would mean that it's 13% by default, but I want to grab the value here. So I'm going to do the value. So what I will say here, context.value, if I save this, refresh. All right, you see the value that even hover over it. You can see here, it will just loop through all that is fine. But what I want to do now is I want to say here return, and just only this specific value. Save that, refresh. Now you can see we're just getting these solid absolute numbers. All right, so now we have this, but what I want to do now is I want to get the sum as well. So the total sum needs to be added in here. How do we do this? Well, if you go back here to our context, save that, refresh, you see all of these information. We click on one of these objects. We click on data set. And you can see here, we get here the data, we get the full array. So this is what we need because basically this array we can total sum. How to get there from data set and then dot data. So what I do now is context.data set dot data. Save that, refresh. There we are. So now we get the full array of the values here. And now what I want to do is just to do a sum value on this. So to do this, let's do here constant. I'm going to say sum. I'm going to say here this array because basically this is the array of the seven items then what i want to do here when we have this array i want to say dot reduce which is a array method to reduce multiple values in an array into a single value so what i'm going to say here is the following put in a double parentheses and then i'm going to make sure we have this callback functionality here or this arrow function expression and what i want here is the total value comma the data point and the total value by default is zero at this moment, but it will loop through every item or every item in the array, which is the data point. So it will loop through. It starts with zero and then say plus 18, then plus 12, plus six, plus nine, etc., etc. So that's what we're going to do here. So here, curly braces. And then in here, what I want to say, here, I want to return the value. And what is the value? Total, and it starts with zero plus the data point and loop through all these data points one by one. Semicolon here. Now, if I do this, if I do here just only the sum, let's put it in here, save that, refresh, we get now 69, which is the total sum of the entire value here, all right? So that's beautiful. So let's put this back here. We have the sum here. And now what I want to do is just to customize that. So I'm going to make here template literals, which means I'm going to use backticks. And for backticks on your keyboard, it is below the escape button, or at least for your MacBook. So then we're going to say here, Back tick at the beginning and back tick at the end. That would mean that we're going to use here template literal, so dollar sign to indicate that this item here is a variable. So we say here constant this, and then we could say of of a total, and then we say total. Let's grab here the sum. Put it in here. Of course, this is a constant, which is a variable as well. So dollar sign, and then brackets. Once we did that, semicolon here, save that, refresh. You can see here it loads, and then of course you can see we get some of these things here, but we get now everything what we need. All right, so what I want to do here now finally is just to fine tune this a little bit. So what I want to do here, first of all, uh, I'm going here into the layout, I'm going to say aspect ratio. I'm going to convert this into a rectangular shape, so I say aspect ratio number two. Save that, refresh. All right, that looks slightly better, but of course, let's make this bigger because we reduced the size here. So let's make this now 700, so it will look like a bar chart. All right, so the same shape as a bar chart. And basically, we have all of this here, and maybe we could even remove these items now. That is, of course, up to 
you but i guess we i will for now i will just remove the legend because i see no value in the legend anymore so i'm going to do final item here in the plugins to say legend and then you say here display false make sure you have a comma here save that refresh and there we are and this is basically how we can play around by creating a custom label outside the pie chart and then also have a total sum value here beautiful so if you like this video and maybe you want to go a bit more advanced or even something more fancy i would highly recommend to explore this one how to create a donut chart with labels outside with connecting lines in chart.js which you create a donut chart and you can see here you have these custom tags that we created around here with the connecting lines a very interesting topic as well